Alright, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan, and I hope you're all doing well and welcome to my match review of Chelsea's 2-1 win over Barcelona. But before we get into today's video, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notifications icon to keep locked to all my content. Right, so yeah, pre-season game, a bunch of changes, a load of interesting talking points, and although it is only pre-season and it's Barcelona's first pre-season game and Chelsea have already had a couple, it's always good to be beat Barcelona, especially if you're a Chelsea fan. Now, Barcelona are better players, and even though Messi and Suarez weren't there, they had a lot of great players that uh, took to the field today. Chelsea have obviously got a load of, not untested, but players like Tammy Abraham playing. So, Chelsea were the inferior side generally, but Chelsea came up on top and won with goals from uh, Tammy Abraham, um, Ross Barkley, and then late doors, Ivan Rakitic. Anyway, enough of my early rambling, let's get into the formation. Before we talk about Chelsea, Barcelona deployed a 4-3-3. It looks something like this. I'll have it up in the, where am I, one of these sides. Uh, Valverde often plays a 4-4-2, but he played a 4-3-3, excuse me, in this instance. And by all accounts, he kept that formation throughout. Antoine Griezmann started up front, um, which is interesting to see. He played quite well, but other than that, a few rotations, a few B-team players, but a lot of household names still in the Barcelona squad today. So in the first half, Chelsea's starting 11 and formation looked a little bit like this. Chelsea deployed a 4-2-3-1 and that uh, drops into a sort of 4-4-2 out of possession with Mason Mount joining the striker. In goal, we had Kepa Ariza Balaga and this was his first game of pre-season. He played incredibly well. In the back line, we had Emerson left back as for Laqueta right back and the centre back pairing was Christensen and Louise. The engine room double pivot was Jorginho and Kovacic which worked incredibly well and I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. The three attacking midfielders consisted of Christian Pulisic getting his first start for Chelsea on the left, Pedro getting a start against his old team on the right and Lampard's boy Mason Mount in the number 10 role behind young English striker Tammy Abraham. First couple of minutes looked a bit worrying for Chelsea. Barcelona were all over Chelsea um, for the first like maybe two and a half minutes uh, but Chelsea did settle and once Chelsea settled and gathered their confidence uh, they started passing incredibly well and also they started applying a really good high press against Barcelona. My immediate reaction to the opening I don't know first half hour of the game was how I was incredibly impressed of how the 4-2-3-1 for Chelsea had evolved so much, or certainly the players looked way more comfortable and confident in this formation. It actually looks like the most fragile formation so far in preseason, but today against Barcelona, the players looked incredibly disciplined and the passing was really, really good. So there was good defensive discipline out of possession, keeping Barcelona out. But when in possession, the passing was incredibly good. The combinations were incredibly good. Um, yeah, and it was just good. Oh yeah, and I was going to say, the pressing was incredibly good. Every player from the front four knew when to press the ball and who would drop back and fill in. Basically, it looked incredibly regimented, yet flexible. Very promising. The work rate of the front four in the first half was incredibly impressive, notably most from Tammy Abraham. He had a few wobbly moments early doors in this game, but he grew into this half very much so. He was always chasing down the ball and always applying pressure to the opposition defence. The three attacking mids behind were also incredibly good in final third pressure. Perhaps not so much Pedro, but Pedro actually offered a lot defensively in this half, which was very, very good. Again, high work rate there. Today, Chelsea's back line looked so much more comfortable than they had been looking in previous seasons. Certainly in the first half, uh, Louise and Christensen's partnership very, very good. Louise was excellent today actually and he demonstrated a lot of his comfortable, quick passing, you know when Louise picks the ball up but makes a real quick pass to catch out the opposition. Christensen was incredibly good as well. He made some midfield runs that was, um, well the both centre backs made midfield runs and the chemistry between them was incredibly calm between the whole back four in terms of playing out from the back. Azpilicueta was incredibly good today in terms of defending. We all know he's a good one-on-one -on -one defender, solid today. He kept that Barcelona kid, Collado I think it is, in his pocket, bless him. But yeah, very good defensive performance from Azpilicueta. Emerson, very good at left back, good at carrying the ball forward, high energy levels, good at morouding, good dribbler but great at combinations and putting crosses in and you know what as for put in an excellent cross in today huge shout out to the double pivot today with Kovacic 
and Jorginho. Very, very good chemistry here today and very comfortable playing out of um, pressure from the opposition. Never panicked. Um, I think we've, Chelsea have got a lot to thank Sari for playing out from the back calmly. Certainly Kovacic and Jorginho look like they might have an incredibly good budding relationship there. Jorginho was very, very good as per usual of being press resistance and playing out from the back. Kovacic was good at that also, but Kovacic, as we know, very good ball progressor and dribbler, demonstrated that today absolutely, carrying the ball forward incredibly well. And the two players that stood out for me today that were doing that was Christian Pulisic and uh, Kovacic in terms of picking up the ball, dribbling and advancing forward. Throughout the first half hour, Chelsea were very confident in possession and were knocking it about quite quickly. And you could probably tell that was due to maybe a bit of a lack of fitness from Barcelona, match fitness, not quite sharp enough, but Chelsea were knocking it around incredibly well. Um, Pulisic was impressive on his first half in his debut, picking up the ball, dribbling around, forcing a couple of shots. There was a, um, a chance in the early stage where he pops off a shot, forces a save, Tammy skies over uh, the rebound sadly. Up until the sort of half hour mark Chelsea have been very impressive with their combinations but the final product had been lacking and obviously like I said Tammy had skied a ball over off a rebound but his head did not drop there. Abraham's application and quickness allowed him to pick up on a mistake, receive the ball, take it round Ter Stegen and convert a lovely goal in the 34th minute making it 1-0 to Chelsea. Chelsea continued their impressive first half and Pulisic picks up the ball, he wins possession back in about the 4th 40th minute does a great run and pops off a shot that just goes wide so again very bright from the youngster that makes it full time at 1-0 all in all a very impressive half from Chelsea maybe could have scored one more but I'd say there was highlights across the pitch Kepa didn't have much to do but he made a couple of good saves in that half the back four was incredibly assured the double pivot of Kovacic and Jorginho was incredibly impressive and suddenly you're thinking oh who's he Lampard's going to drop for Kante. Uh, very, very good. All midfield free, well, attacking midfield free were very good. Pedro probably the least exciting in that half, but he did do some good defensive actions. Uh, Mount very impressive as per his performances have not dropped in pre-season. You can tell why Lampard rates him so highly. Pulisic very impressive on his first start. And Tammy Abraham, of course, with an excellent goal. Superb application and superb work rate. He had a very good half indeed. So that's good to see. Very pleasing first half. So the second half came and Barcelona made a bunch of changes. I'm not going to show you those, but Chelsea made some changes as well. So I'm going to tell you about the Chelsea changes as they happened in a linear fashion, I guess. But in the graphic next to me, I want to show you the starting 11 that Chelsea had in the second half and the 11 that they finished with. So at the beginning of the second half, Kurt Zuma came on for Louise and uh, Marcus Alonso came on for Emerson and there was a peculiar change only three minutes in where Tomori came on for Christensen. I doubt that was planned but maybe it was an injury scare. So we'll say Tomori basically started the second half with them lot. So the second half started with a lot of Barcelona domination. They really imposed themselves on Chelsea in terms of possession and passing the ball but for the first sort of 10 minutes it wasn't that threatening. It was just sort of settling in possession. A couple of good impressive defensive actions by Tomori. We know he's actually very good at recovering Tomori running back. He's got a few flaws in his game but that's one thing he's incredibly good at and one thing I wanted to note that was much to my surprise is that Marcus Alonso made a really good um, interception defensive action against Malcolm down his flank which kind of <laughs> caught me off guard but it was a really good defensive action from Marcus Alonso so props um, he actually had a very good game I'll talk about him a bit more I think Frank Lampard's football might suit him more stylistically but still he caught me out with a very good defensive action there right so the second half is settling a bit more and Chelsea makes some more changes in the 59th minute. Pulisic comes off for Kennedy and he can be very happy with his first start for Chelsea and so can Chelsea fans. Very dynamic, quick and exciting. Giroud comes on for Tammy as well and Barkley takes the place of Mason Mount. Come the 61st minute, Kepa's starting to make more and more saves as Barca's turning this sort of benign possession into threatening possession and they're starting to pop off shots. Nothing too 
not like amazing shots, but they're basically getting shots away and Kepa's making saves and Kepa's looking sharp at this point, but Chelsea are allowing Barca back into the game. Chelsea start to settle more and inside the last half an hour, Giroud and Barkley are starting to look a little bit more sharp in the final third and in the opposition box. Like previous pre-season games, Kennedy has kept me guessing on whether I think he's good or not and he's grown into this uh, half more and more or into pre-season more and more. He's starting to do some sort of tasty work down the right hand side. Another notable moment in the game for me was in the 69th minute where Ross Barkley drops incredibly deep to spray a long diagonal ball, a beautiful long pass to make you think, hmm, maybe he isn't just a floating creative 10. Barkley's been super boss Barkley this preseason. Super boss Barkley, that'll do. Right, so come off the 70th minute and more substitutes. Kovacic comes off for drink water. Azpilicueta comes off for Zappa Costa. Another noteworthy moment. As Piliqueta gives Kurt Zuma the captain's armband, hmm? maybe that was uh, Coach Frank Lampard's instruction to try and keep Kurt Zuma as sweet as possible to fend off any Everton interest. Jorginho came off for Bakayoko and Pedro came off for Batshuayi. Alright, so the formations got weird here and you probably noticed from the graphic that it wasn't how Chelsea started. It's looking more like a 4-2-4 in possession and a 4-3-3 out of possession with Ross Barkley being the player that's dropping from mid to the front line and vice versa. This was an incredibly hard to analyze in terms of shape because often along the front line there were four making a flat four along the front. Um, and I was trying to figure out who was staying where and to be honest it was only really Kennedy that stayed residing on the right hand side and the other three along the front four were changing around a lot but you could tell very much it was a 4-2-4 in possession where it would just be Drinkwater and Bakayoko occupying uh, screening the back four essentially. But like I said Barkley would drop back deep. Come off the 78th minute and Michy Batshuayi nearly converts an excellent goal after some great combination play from Chelsea but scuffs it. But then after some sort of wasted chances, come off the 81st minute, Ross Barkley scores a lovely long range goal. Great finish, maybe not the best defending, but the finish was excellent. Assist, Marcus Alonso. 90th minute, Danny Drinkwater concedes a free kick right on the edge of our box, but Rakitic fires over. You can tell Rakitic felt annoyed by himself because in the 91st minute, he scores an absolute worldy long range banger just one minute after his poor free kick. Kepa can't do anything about that long range goal is a great finish but maybe Tamore shouldn't be hiding away from it. Right the game ends 2-1 Chelsea. Now a few notable performances in that second half. Firstly props to Marcus Alonso much better defensively and it looks like under Frank Lampard he may be way more comfortable in the spaces that he's allowed to occupy in terms of his tactical instruction. If people can fill in for him when he morales forward and he can sort of chill out in that forward left hand flank where he can do a lot of damage in terms of assists and as a goal threat maybe Marcus Alonso could be a big player for Chelsea this season. I rate Emerson over him as a conventional fullback but if Frank accommodates Marcus Alonso's positive attributes we could be in business. Another shout out for Kepa he was excellent in this half uh, throughout the game really but he was called into action a lot more in this half and had to make a lot of saves and he showed why he really is a top tier goalkeeper. And finally I've got to give a massive massive shout out to Ross Barkley who in pre-season has been excellent man I mean I got a lot of stick from Chelsea fans from saying I think he could be a big player for, Ch for Chelsea this season he's doing, I mean, he's doing himself no damage with these excellent pre-season performances he looks fit it looks like he can do it all. He can finish from long range, short range, long passes, short passes, press resistant. Ross Barkley is looking good, man. All right, that's enough of the formations, guys. I tried to make this match review quicker than the last one, but I have so much to talk about. So yeah, sorry if it's still a bit long, but I hope you did enjoy it, guys. If you did enjoy it, please do like the video, subscribe to my channel if you are new. Um, again, I'm gonna plug my Patreon in the description if you wanna support the channel and play $1 a month while I'm not monetized but you also get uh, access to exclusive content which you might enjoy also follow me on instagram and twitter at football yannick that's it guys thank you so much for tuning in i'm actually melting in my studio today so i'm gonna bounce enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back.